Hello everyone and welcome to another watercolor painting video. I thank you for joining me. In this video I thought I'd go back and uh, kind of redo one of the paintings that uh, I did before that there were some elements I wasn't happy with. Uh, this one here called The Old Gate. Uh, I believe I used a photo from one of those uh, free sites. Uh, and here is the the one that I did before. So that's what we're going to be doing now. I've wet the paper, and I'm coming in with some diluted green blue. So that's cad yellow, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of Payne's gray. And this is going to set up the background for the whole painting. So I'm using the uh, large the large brush and just taking advantage of that wet background to create sort of a diffused background. Now I have sped this up just a little bit. This one went a little long and but I think you can still get the idea of uh, of what I'm doing. They won't all be like that but uh, this one here like I said went a little long and it's kind of long to go back and kind of voice over. So I've added a little bit more green, adding a little tints of sort of yellow ochres, raw sienna. And again, a lot of this is to set up the background so it looks deeper into the into the trees i didn't do that on the original one when i did the first painting i just went in and i painted the trees i didn't do the background so definitely a uh, advancement in the learning process So I've, I'm taking the brush and I've gone with some darker greens now and pressed that into the bristles of the brush. And now I'm just setting up some, some leaves from the trees, darker from the side corners, just to kind of keep you in the center of the painting. Again, using the bristles of the brush, this is the uh, Frank Clark goat here. And if you have this brush, it's good for leaves. Um, the bristles are the way they spread apart. Um, I do like it for that purpose. I'm just varying up the greens here, creating that backdrop. I've probably covered up more of that background, but that's okay. Now I'm adding some yellow ochre with some raw sienna. Wash just to create, eventually there'll be a little bit of a road there. And adding a little bit of a warm color to the foreground. In the other painting, I went a little too red, I felt. So now here, I specifically left open that area so I could put in my tree. And this is where it's helpful to know what you're doing in advance. Uh, and to do a painting more than one time, the same painting, because you'll learn things every time you do that painting. Um, but by doing this, the there will be some light from behind the tree, as opposed to painting over a lot of shrubbery or things that are there. So I'm putting in this tree, and we'll have some light from behind it, uh, which will help accent the tree as well. 
Now before I painted the background and then I painted the tree over it. I'm just coming in with the rigger brush and laying in some branches. This one here is being done on 90 pound Fabriano 11 by 14. And now I'm pulling out the credit card and I'm doing a little scraping of the, of the tree. And I really like how that gives almost like a bark effect. And just like with the rocks, I come back with some darker color and kind of smooth that out a little bit. I've hit this with the spray brush. I want this to stay a little wet because it started to dry. And just taking the credit card and creating some sticks and some branches and things. And then just dabbing, <clears throat> excuse me, just dabbing into that uh, so that it's not so obvious. So that it looks like the branches and things are within the leaves. I see some people, they'll scrape and then they'll leave it like that. And the problem with that is, is that, uh, and, and that's not a problem if you want it to look like that, but then it looks like there's a dead tree in front of your foliage. So if you scrape it and then you dab over the top of that, then it looks like it's inside and it looks more like the tree branches itself. Now, I'm creating, this is actually going to end up being a road. I know it kind of looks like the shadow from the tree, but uh, there's going to be a little bit of a path here. It kind of started out that way, but I decided it was better for the painting to sort of have a little bit of a road there, and then the gate makes a little more sense. So now I'm adding some grasses to the foreground area. And if you lay a wash that's a different color like the one that I have or a color down and you start to lay the grasses down and leave some spaces, it looks like there's dirt in between. It's quite a nice effect. So try not to cover too much of that up. Okay, so just adding some more grasses. A little bit with the spray bottle. And we'll add some uh, leaves to that big tree as well. So just some cad yellow hue, just to lay down a, a lighter color at first. Kind of an odd looking tree, not one of my better trees, but once we get the leaves on there, I think it'll look okay. And as you can see, the space in the foliage behind the tree it gives it that effect so that it's not all covered area okay so now that that groundwork is laid in we'll come back with some darker colors And just start really accenting some of the foliage. You notice when you start going to the darker colors, 
then things really start to pop. As everyone tells you in painting, you can't have dark, or you can't have light without the dark. So the, the more you darken certain things, it's going to make things really pop. So Payne's Gray is my go-to. Payne's Gray and Blue mixed with some of the other colors. And now that I've got that in the brush too, I'm going to go around and do my darkening. Like my leaves, areas where the leaves would be a little darker, closer to the tree. I'm just going to put in a few more branches. So now I'll start adding some more grasses to the foreground and some darker shades of that green. I've noticed a lot of people will use, you know, hooker's green, they'll use sap green. Um, those are fine. I mean, I, I'm not a big user of, of ready-made greens. But if you're using those and you really want to use ready-made greens, they're better uh, if you add a little something to them. Um, you can add a little to sap green. You can add some raw sienna um, and some other colors to get a little bit more realistic greens. I don't think the greens that they make are very realistic. The ones that are traditionally used, hooker's green, viridian, um, and sap green by themselves... I think you have to do a little to them, but if you just use ultramarine blue, yellow, um, you can really make some nice greens that way. And it's good to get used to making them because then you start varying up your green. So more blue, you know, more yellow, brighter, uh, more panes gray, darker, and it kind of teaches you the basics of mixing if you're just starting out. So to make your own greens will help you if you're new and just starting out to understand how mixing works from the beginning. So I'm just adding grasses for the foreground. I'm leaving room for that gate ultimately that's going to go in. I've used a lot of cad yellow there to really highlight that grass. So now we're going to go to the flat brush. It's not a brush I use a lot, but if I want to do man-made items, I'll go to the flat brush. And uh, I'm using some very dark colors here, just uh, Payne's Gray and some Burnt Umber. And we're just going to start putting in this, this gate. And we just, we want it to look like an old wooden gate. So the first thing I'm going to do to make the fence look aged is I'm going to take my credit card and I'm going to just scrape off some of that paint. And then to make it look like an old white whitewashed fence that's kind of wearing out, I'll add a little bit of uh, white gouache, titanium white.
Okay, so now in the back here, we'll uh, put in a, uh, a fence, maybe that used to connect to the gate. Take the flat brush, just put in some, you know, sticks, make them smaller so they look like they're a little further away. Just an old fence that's back here. Otherwise, the gate just is not uh, on its own make any sense. Again, come in with a little card and just scratch some highlights on there. Works very nicely. You don't have to use the white if you don't want to. Okay, so now I'm just going to touch up on uh, some of that foliage. I do skip around a little bit. I mean, I skipped from going to the, uh, to the gate. And I'll do that just to kind of let things dry a little bit so I can keep going. So just touching up some of the foliage. And when you put a gate or something like that in there, it's always a good idea to t touch up around where the uh, things are anchored to the ground. I like doing it around trees and fences and things. And so it doesn't look as much like it's floating there than in midair. Okay, so now I'm just coming in with a little bit of that white and it'll look like an old whitewashed fence that's wearing out. So just touching up a little uh, area of the fence back there. And of course, as I promised, I would put out another watercolor video this week, even though I'm doing my other series, which is the journey in oil painting. I hope you're getting an opportunity to watch that and you're enjoying that series as well. I'm enjoying doing it. Um, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun to try different mediums. I think you learn more about the medium you're currently doing when you jump around and do different mediums. I had done uh, some pastels in the past and uh, I really haven't delved into acrylics maybe that'll be a future uh, a future thing they dry so fast though it doesn't really give you too much of a chance to work unless you use some kind of retardant but uh, it could be something I try in the future so far we'll work on uh, watercolors for the most part will be the main focus and I'll do the little little oil series so I hope you're enjoying all those videos So I'm just adding little details to the fence here as we go along. Most of our main work is done now.
Okay, so I've just kind of decided in my head here just to push that little fence back even a little more. I'm just going to add a couple, couple little things. I'm going to add another tree here. Give it a little scrape. And just a few branches with the rigger brush. Now that we're closing in toward the end, this is this is a time when you can do little details. Just kind of look over the painting and um, just just little minor details. Not fussing, of course, but uh, just just little little touches here and there. Um, touch up little things along the fence, and you know, just have fun with it. Maybe little shadows underneath or. You know, just whatever you think it needs, just look at it. I'm going to add another little, little thing here. I don't really like where that fence is ended. Um, I'm just going to add like an old stumpy... Maybe it's a broken tree of some kind or whatever. I'm just gonna throw a little something in here. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Maybe there was a tree here and it broke during a storm or something. You can make friends with the old fence. Okay, we're closing in near the end here. Again, just a few little minor details. We'll take a close-up look of everything. Just kind of zoom in on a few things. I think that tree is kind of unique looking. Kind of makes you look over there to what am I looking at. And here's the finished painting. Well, I thank everybody for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe and comment. Have a great day.